exalt your name, O oh God, because you are worthy. There is no God like Jehovah the I Am that I am. And Father, we just want to thank you. We declare in the midst of the sadness and in the midst of the uncertainties that you are a good God, that you are a way maker, that you are a miracle worker, that you are a promise keeper. That you are light in the darkness, Father. We declare, O oh God, that you rule and that you reign. And that you're here to comfort this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen. Amen and amen. And I know that... It's difficult, but I just want to encourage you to just sing with us this morning. Whatever you can, however much, however much you can, let's just give God some glory because truly He is a way maker this morning. And if you know Him as God, you know that in the midst of this, He has a plan. 
and the thoughts that he thinks towards us are thoughts of peace. So technical, whenever you're ready. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. And he will give us a future. He will give us a hope. And he will give us that expected end. Amen. God is indeed great. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Minister Chantal. Hallelujah. We want to sing the song. Says he's a way maker this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We bless you. And we exalt you as the way we come this morning in the name of Jesus.
Ecclesiastes 12, I'll start from verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the window be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low, and when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosened, or the golden bow be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave. Amen? Just one stand on. We just want to stand and say blessed assurance. And it is a blessed assurance. Amen. 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 
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to be having Jalea and Zalila, that is Karen's children, along with their Aunt Michelle, you know, the, the eulogy. So suddenly, she came to Trinidad at the age of 12 years and attended Woodbrook Secondary School, where she believed to be the best school in the world. You can't see anything bad or negative about the school in her presence. She made so many lifelong friends and memories at Woodbrook. She worked at excellent stores for several years. During these days, Sabina and I would remind her every day, Omi, don't forget to bring home our snacks. And the snacks could only be Skittles or Hershey's or white chocolate. We had a high standard for snacks. After attaining product knowledge, customer service, and clientele, she left to start off her own establishment. She started off in her backyard and then relocated to Marval, a location that became her second home. She was her own boss and worked every day, Sunday to Sunday. I remember telling Omi, you have workers for that. Stay home and rest yourself. She would say, nah, 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 after going for sales. If you know Omi, you would know she is very stubborn and never wrong. You don't have to be her child to get disciplined or tapped. You could be older than her and she's still never wrong. And Granny done? Everywhere we went, she made friends, persons of all races, religion, different classes, in society, you name it. She was friendly and extremely caring to so many. She treated others better than she treated herself. Omi loved my sister and I so much. She spoils the video like no other. That was her princess. I moved out and I felt like I still live with Umi. She called me morning, lunchtime, nighttime, you name it. If she didn't get through to me, she would then call Tony's phone. She didn't care if I was bathing or occupied. Her calls must be answered right away. She's always right. She loved her grandchildren so much. Junior was the son she never had. Growing up, she would beat Zabida and I so much, especially Zabida. She would be flying around the yard, felt and jump kicks behind her. The funny thing is, if I tried to beat my kids, she would block for them. She was the granny who spoiled them so much. Junior would call for a headset three times for a month. Granny bring a headset when you're coming. And three times for a month, she will get that headset. And she would say, Junior, but you ain't easy, but she's still bringing the headset. Junior could ask me to pick him up or drop him. I would say no, she would say yes, and still go for him. Then came along Antonio, her new night buddy, another son she never had. He fitted right in with the spoiling. Antonio spent every Saturday into Sunday with Umi. He doesn't go by anybody, but when he sees Umi, he runs into her arms and smiles. The amount of love she showed the two of them was priceless. Umi had so many family and people she cared about. We thank you for being part of her life and impacting on us so significantly. She was one of a kind and will permanently leave a scar in our hearts. Zabida and I will cherish our memories forever. Good morning, everyone. I wrote this with a heavy heart. Yep, grateful one. My mother was full of soul, 
figure, talent and kindness. She mastered the art of forgiveness and selflessness. To a point I too was astonished, but in a scene well learned. She always told me that no matter what others may do unto you, you must always be kind and lead a good life because it is food for your soul. She is right because through our virtues, when we die, that doorway of death can move you to a higher place. I was a miserable preteen and I have gotten tons and tons of flicks and karate kicks from who I bring up. Don't worry, it wasn't only me. She wouldn't hesitate to discipline anyone who wasn't using their head. She would say, your head good? According to her past co-workers, especially. And they were in her age group and above. Consider yourself privileged to get both from me. My friends would even say. On the other hand, she has never left my sister and I undone. Call her, she's there. Ask her for a favor, she's there. Help a friend, she's there. Donate to others, she's there. Support our endeavors, and she's there. She gave us the will in her own special way. My mother was a dragon boater, a decorator, a counselor, and a mother to many. And according to her previous course, she was an astute liar. I remember on Mother's Day last year, I told her that I knew I chose her as a mother way before I was born. Because I just couldn't see it being anybody else. I saw so much love and warmth oozing from her. She was proud and pleased. For me, my tears feel endless since you have died, but I promise I won't let these tears mar the smiles, love, and life lessons that you have given me with when you were alive. I have seen an outpour of love, support, and condolences from my family and my mother's longest of friends, who are like seven families. This makes my heart a bit glad, because this is something we all need. To anyone suffering a loss or not, I want you to keep around those who love you and make you happy. I love you, Omi, and I will miss you every day. May the angels take care of you. Made it all the way to the finals and placed in the top three. But guess what? 
even us when we bomb newspaper. And my father used to buy all the newspapers printed. So when Karen realized that our father was about to read the newspapers, left cross and all, she sneak up and pulled to pick up the bomb and pull out the page. Well, we had a good laugh when my father said in his Guyanese accent and all, or wait now, like a rap man, bitch. <laughs> I remember when my mother insisted I drink some natogen to help my brain because I was approaching common entrance class. I hated some natogen or anything healthy, but I was not allowed to get up from that table until I drink all. But guess what? Carol would help me drink some and pour the rest for the dog through the window when my mother got distracted. <laughs> I remember when Cheryl left home for a line with a spandex top and her jeans because that was the in thing then, right? But once my father was home, she had to put on her jacket. So she would walk through the front door, hang up the jacket on the line. But that day, the rain fall, somebody picked up all the clothes. When she reached back home, no jacket on the line, and daddy sat on the living room, legs crossed, tea and cup, newspaper in hand. But guess what? Karen to the rescue again, throw a replacement jacket through the window, Cheryl come to the front door, everything good. I remember when I used to attend vacation by the school, and I would have to run home immediately after, because two girls always wanted to be good. Up to this day, I don't know. I went home and I told Karen, and both she and Cheryl came to my rescue, and of course, they gave the girls what I would call a stern one. I remember when we went to the preschool, the Christmas party, and Karen was not pleased with the gift Kayla received from the gift exchange because she got the gift Kayla had to exchange. Well, by the time Karen finished with the principal, Kayla got a different gift and countless apologies. <laughs> Karen was a bit of a bad journey, you know, but she was very caring, loving, and a selfless person. Karen knew how to stretch a dollar, even the dollar she didn't have, to ensure children, both known and unknown to her, received Christmas presents. She was a giver, a helper, a mother to so many apart from her two daughters and and that's how my mother gave her the name mother teresa she was not afraid to scold her daughter's friends they all called her woman and gave her full and utmost respect they all loved her to pieces she loved all her nieces cousins nephews everybody she had a special place in her heart for everyone whenever Ezekiel did foolishness she would watch him and say get head good and give him the look, and that was all he needed to get in line. As for me, she would say, you mad me, and we would both laugh. I would truly miss her. She would video call every weekend to show me her grandson. She would call almost every other day and start a conversation with, yeah, Michelle, like you're sleeping. I actually picked up the phone two days ago to call, and then the realization hit me. I don't know how to move on from this. I know Cheryl and now Karen. Life will never be the same. She will forever live on in our hearts. Fly high. Man, I just um, I just think how great that was. Oh Lord, my God. Thank you. 
I remember Karen on a very, very personal note. Um, for me and my wife, I don't think we ever bought anything at Excellence Stores without getting a discount. Uh, so uh, we got discounts all the time. Most Trinidadians always buy things at the shelf price. Whatever the price they see there, they buy. But we grew up in Nigeria knowing how to ask for discounts. And Karen matched us all the way. Uh, the well, moment we found out she was Michelle's sister, that was it for us. And not only did she do that for us, 
she also helped us out a lot in terms of as a local church ever so often when we had different things and excellent stores had different things that they had to do we were partakers of that so i can tell you that she's a phenomenal giver she stood in there as one who was a fantastic giver and then also somebody who could i mean she just knew how to negotiate just stick her way through a wonderful businesswoman and i really want to thank god and of course a love of life full of life full 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 of life and like the things that have been said about here today are just absolutely solid and i want to say this very generally that whenever you come to the concept of death that somebody dies of course the mixed feelings that are there because many times we look at death as just simply meaning that the individual ceases to exist but that's not it death is not the end of it all physical death is just one aspect of death when you look at what the bible teaches concerning death there are at least three kinds of death that the bible talks about the mother of all death is spiritual death not physical death the physical death basically speaks to the separation of the soul and the spirit from the body bible says that the spirit that the body without the spirit is dead just the same way faith without works is dead so when you talk about physical death that's really what it is our physical body is the house in which we live in we're real our real being we're spirits the bible teaches that god is a spirit and then the worshiping have to do it in spirit and in truth so the god being a spirit and the bible says that we are created in the image and likeness of god makes us spirits so the death of the physical body is not the end of it all. I often tell people when I'm in a funeral service, I tell them, I call the name of their relative whose life we're celebrating, and in this case, Karen Patricia Ash. And I'll say to them that the casket that you see in front of you, the body inside that casket is not the person that you came to celebrate their life. This is simply the house in which they lived in. So Karen Patricia Ash is not in this casket at this point in time. She's not the one here. Karen, the Bible says, the moment you're absent from the body, you literally become connected to the Lord. So Karen Patricia Ash is not in this casket. What we have in this casket is the house that she lived in. And that helps us to be able to remember the individual and connect with the individual on this side of life. But beyond that, the individual, there's a connection with God. And that's where spiritual death and spiritual life comes in. When man is spiritually dead, the person can actually be physically alive, but they're spiritually dead. And that's why it's so important that we connect with God on a very strong note. Every funeral service that you attend, every memorial service that you attend, should give you an opportunity to evaluate your own life and be able to connect with God afresh and be able to get yourself on that pathway of life. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, that the devil came to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I believe that beyond what, I mean, I don't even have to believe it. You know it. Every single one of us here has felt the sting of death. We have all felt it one way or the other. The sting of death is that effect that you get when somebody close to you has died, or somebody that you know has died. That is that same thing that makes every one of the people that came up here to do the eulogy, talk about the concept of missing the person, not being able to chat with that person, not being able to talk with that person anymore in this particular side of life. That's part of what the sting of death does. There is the things that you would have connected with, and then suddenly you are not able to flow in that anymore. But God has an answer for the sting of death. The first answer that God gives us is what we call supernatural comfort. God comes to comfort us. The Bible says he will give us beauty for ashes. The oil, and no pun intended, that name is ash, you know, the, but, you know, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Because when somebody dies, there's that concept of the spirit of heaviness. There is a heaviness. There is nobody who is fully joyful when a relative of theirs dies. Because there's that sting of death causes them to go into that place of heaviness. But God says, I'll give you the 
garment of praise that in the midst of it you will still be able to lift me up you'll be able to praise me because I'm bigger than that that physical death is not the end of it another thing that God puts us in and tries to make us connect with is the memory of that individual the Bible says it brings a blessing Bible says that the memory of the just is blessed when I was in medical school I used to think that that meant that you know I'm so blessed like we were hearing about Karen telling people your head good and you know I used to tell people that the memory of the just means you can remember everything that you've learned you go into the exam hall and your memory is so blessed you can remember everything but as I continue to serve the word of God I realized that that's not what that scripture was speaking about the scripture was simply saying that every time I remember somebody that has gone home to be with the Lord that particular, just that excellent, that memory brings a blessing. What that memory does is that it connects me to something about that individual that will lift me. It will bring me into a place where I can remember an attribute of that person that I can tap into and then use it to better my own life. I'm sure for Zabida, for Talia, every single time you remember Karen, one thing is going to come out to you that will put you in a better place in terms of your walk here on the face of the earth. You will remember an admonition. You are going to remember some discipline. You are going to remember some fun time. You are going to remember some word that she said. You are going to remember some act that went on that will put you in a better place to bring God honor and to bring God praise. That's why the Bible says the memory of the justice blessed. There is a blessing just to remember that individual. The third thing that God does for us in order to make sure that we overcome the sting of death is to do something in terms of our own lives. You know, like I said, every funeral service, every memorial service that you attend is supposed to bring you into the place where you evaluate your own life with God. This is like you getting a dress rehearsal in terms of the time that you yourself will leave the face of the earth. Because if the Lord tarries, all of us will pass through this. We might not get the opportunity to pass through it where somebody has been able to lead us to the Lord. We might not get the opportunity to pass through it in a way that people will be able to come out like this and say some phenomenal things about us. But one thing is sure, you will pass through this way. Death will knock on every single door if the Lord tarries. None of us here is going to live forever in terms of physically live forever. At one time or the other, you're going to have to deal with that. And therefore, it's important to prepare yourself before that time. Because there is no amount of eulogy that is said, no amount of glowing words that are going to be spoken of over you. There is no amount of holy water that the priest is going to pour on your casket, no amount of sand that is going to be put on your casket that is going to cause you to rest in peace. It doesn't matter what people write on your picture, R-I-P, S-I-P, it doesn't change anything about the cause of your life. All those things are done to be able to help the people who are alive, to make themselves feel good. After all, my sister is resting in peace, my brother is resting in peace. But the important thing, you ain't resting in no peace if you don't connect with God. And they could jump that, they could say that, they could drum that everywhere they drum it. It's not going to change anything. Because the moment says, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Ecclesiastes 12 tells us that when death occurs that the dust returns to the dust from whence it came, but the spirit returns to God. So we're not doing this service to usher Karen into heaven. We're not doing this service so that Karen will rest well. We're not doing this service so that the gods will receive her or the angels will be able to do something for her. If Karen ain't with God, there's nothing we can do here to change that. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So this service is more for you. It's more for you than for anybody else. This service is more for you than your life. And you can do something about your own life. And you can do something about your own connection with God. So what this service is supposed to be doing at this point in time, as we've celebrated our life, as we continue to celebrate our life, that should be your point of, of, you know, your point of contact to change your own way with God and say, hey, Lord, 
I want to connect with you better. So it doesn't matter who stands on the pulpit and says good words about me. I want to know that I'm connected to you. It's not what they said about me on the pulpit that is going to determine whether I'm joined to you or I'm not joined to you. What's going to determine that is that have you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior so that in your connection with it, it doesn't matter whether people like you, they don't like you, you will know that you are one with the Lord. So with every eye closed and with every head bowed, I want to ask you a question. I want to listen to me very clearly. I want you to remember that if you were the only sinner upon the face of the earth, Jesus Christ would have still died for you. And so with those thoughts in your heart, I want you to realize that God's own open arms are available calling you to come in to turn your heart to him so that you are sure you are assured of your salvation we sang the song blessed assurance today it's based on the concept of being assured of your salvation i thank god that i was able to connect with karen i thank god that i was able to know her even up to the a couple of days before she died and i'm thanking god that i believe with all my heart that there's a connection that she had with God that I don't need to write RIP on her picture. I don't need to write SIP anywhere. I know, I believe God very strongly that she's connected with the Lord because of the connections that I have with her towards the end of her life. I know that in that context. But I don't know what it is about you. So bow your head with me. And if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your personal Savior, I want you to flip your right hand up in the air and drop it back down. Wherever you are, thank you so much. Drop it back down. Anybody else you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, flip your right hand up in the air and drop it back down. Good. Those of you that raise your hands, I want you to do one more thing for me. I'm not asking you to come to the front. I don't need to do that. Right where you are, the Lord will touch you. I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to stand on your feet. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I want you to stand. Those of you that raise your hands, I want you to stand right now. I want you to lead you in prayer. I want to lead you in prayer. With your heads bowed, with your eyes closed, I want you to connect with God. Look at Jesus in front of you right now. Look at him walking with you. Look at him in your life at this point in time. Look at him coming in. And I want you to pray this prayer with me with the seriousness of your heart, meaning it from the depths of your heart to connect with God. Let's pray together. Say, oh God, I come to you now just as I am, a sinner. And I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior, I believe with my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead in order to save me. Jesus, come into my heart. Reign in my life. Be my Lord. I renounce the devil and all his works. Holy Spirit, Help me to live a truly Christian life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. From today, I'll serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, I thank you for these ones. I give you praise for them. I commend them unto you. And I trust you that they will desire the sincere milk of the world, that they grow thereby. And that through them, many more people will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm going to say a couple of things to you while I have the family stand. I want Karen's family, immediate family to stand. I want to pray with them. Let them stand, you know, one down and the rest just come closer. While they're coming closer and all that, what I want to do, I want to say this to those of you that turned your hearts to the Lord. Something tremendous has taken place in your life and I want to give you an opportunity to work on it. Number one thing I want you to do is to begin to pray. Connect with God. You are a child of God. 
you can speak to him you can connect with him the difference between speaking to god and somebody else is the respect mood that is attached to it so go ahead and be able to communicate with god number two read your bible so that you can understand the things about god especially from the new testament so you can grow number three connect yourself to a good bible believing church so that you can grow in the things of god if you are not sure of one you are in one right now we have services every Sunday, 6.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. And then number four, let somebody know what has happened to you. You are no longer the same person that you used to be. Something wonderful, something glorious has taken place in your life. Father, I want to lift this family up unto you at this time. I thank you for your hand upon their lives. This family has gone through a lot in recent times. And Lord, I want to thank you that you are still the comforter and you are still the strengthener. You said in your word, you will give us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of evidence. And God, we do that today. We receive it in the name of Jesus. We receive that comfort. We receive that joy. We receive the strength that you make available in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let this season be a point of contact for this family to walk stronger with you. Let this season be a point of contact for your hand of love to be evident upon them. Let them be able to draw closer together and let them be able to grow together in the name of the Lord Jesus. We declare that this will be a point of contact for prosperity, for expansion, for growth, for development in this family. Lord, you will wipe away their tears and give them beauty for ashes in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Father, and we give you the glory for it in the name of Jesus. Now, what we're going to be doing, we're going to pray what we call the prayer of committal so that we will not have to um, be delayed at the uh, at the uh, crematorium and all that. The committal speaks to our, our belief in the resurrection of the dead. Many times people think that the committal is ushering the person into heaven. No, we said that already. If the person is not there, they can't be there. So don't waste your time. You know. So it's, it's, it's committing the body, using our using the body to express our faith in God that we believe in the resurrection of the dead. That's what the committal is all about. We're using Karen's body to do that. So can I get a representative from the uh, funeral home to just come over, open for us? Hallelujah. And then after the committal. I'll give you an opportunity to come and view your body before we go. Is that okay? Amen. If you want to stand, you can. Okay? But if not, no problem. Father, we thank you for the life that Karen lived upon the face of the earth. Thank you for the connection that you gave us, that we're able to relate to her, and she was able to relate to us. Lord, we thank you for what your word says. You said in your word that our bodies are sown in weakness. But however, you give a strength and a supernatural strong body to be risen even unto you. You said in your word that our body are sown as mortal bodies. But an immortal body is resurrected. It is sown a natural body. But a spiritual body is lifted up. Father, we come today believing in the resurrection of the dead. And we see our sister's body at the point of contact to believe that. That your word says that when death occurs, that the body or the dust returns to the dust as it came, but that the spirit returns to God who gave it. And therefore, we thank you that we are connected to you on a higher level. We are connected to you on a strong level. That death is brought low as the final enemy that the sting of it is removed because of the power of the resurrection and we connect with that power of the resurrection today using our sister's body as the point of contact and we thank you for the resurrection of the dead in Jesus name we declare that at the trump of God that the dead in Christ shall rise first and those of us that are alive shall be caught up with the Lord even to meet up with the Lord and so shall we ever be. We believe in it and we seal that in Jesus name. 
Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, put up verse 6 and 7 for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I'll just quickly find it here. That was our, the first scripture that we read was Ecclesiastes from verse 1, 12, from verse 1 to 7. Verse 6 says, Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. That is talking about death. All those things describe death. Then the Bible says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Thanks be unto God. Amen? So we're going to allow you, and we're going to have some music to play in the background, and we're going to just going to allow you to come in to view the body. We'll let the family be last too, so that it will be easier for them. Okay, so those of you on this side, you can come. This is going to be the exit. This is the exit. So nobody comes from here. So we come from this way and we go that way. And those who want to come from that side, you come from this way and you go that way. So let's start from those folks on that side. Those of you who want to view the body from there, you can come from this side.
So we're going to head out to the uh, crematorium where the service will actually complete the job. So <coughs> once again, we're going to extend our condolences to the Dawn family, to the Ash family, and to everyone that is connected to Karen. Hallelujah. It is well. Yes, I will. 